Good evening. Hello. Wow, a lot of people here. Thank you for coming to this penultimate event in the Diversity Dance Festival here at Anderson University. My name is Eric Yetter, an assistant professor of dance. My colleague, Christine Thacker, professor also of dance here at Anderson. So tonight, you, we are very pleased to present to you Dayton Contemporary Dance Company 2. Now, what does the two stand for? Well, that's their uh, second company of uh, up-and-coming dancers that they are uh, getting ready to go on and go into the company. So uh, they're very energetic and they're very, I've seen them rehearse and it's gonna be a wonderful show tonight. Um, we would like to ask you to turn off your cell phones and all that kind of stuff that you would normally do so that there's not gonna be any disturbance, don't take any video. It is live streaming, so it'll be on YouTube channel um, hopefully, when this is all over. There are a few people that we would like to thank. The first one is uh, the artistic director, Shauna Hickman Matlock of this company, of DC, DC2. Can we have a round of applause? Thank you. And so we also have some other people that Christine would also like to thank. Welcome everyone to Diversity Dance Festival. Um, a few things I want to remind you of is that the Diversity Dance Festival goes into Monday. And so on Monday in this room, we are going to have Sarah Sigmund from Broadway's musical, MJ the Musical. We'll also have Chandra Moss Thorne from Dance Theater of Harlem and Meredith Rainey from uh, Philadelphia. He's, he's been involved with the Philadelphia Ballet and a variety of ballets and choreography up and down the East Coast. They'll all be joining us live, but they'll be zooming in, so you'll see them on the screen, but we will have live audience participation. We'll be having a discussion, and you'll be able to ask questions about life in the theater. Um, Sarah Sigmund is from Carmel, so if you are someone who's aspiring to get to Broadway, she's a good person to talk to. Uh, she's from the area here, and she's um, living in New York City and has done several musicals there now. And so we have um, that wonderful event coming up and also after tonight's concert we'll have a brief question and answer session um, with artistic direct director Shauna Hickman Matlock uh, so you can stick around and ask questions of the artistic director for um, a few moments after tonight's concert and then finally I want to thank first of all um, I want to thank Dean Emeritus Dr. Jeffrey Wright who um, we're sitting in his home this is something that he helped to create and build and he is the founder of the dance program here at Anderson University so we want to make sure that we thank him And we also want to thank um, Dr. Caroline Ahn, who is one of our directing leaders here at the School of Music, Theater, and Dance, and Dr. Chris Holmes for their support. And finally, we have to thank the money. Anderson Madison County Visitors Bureau, who are generous sponsors of Diversity Dance Festival. They have been sponsors of ours for two years now, and we're so grateful for all the help that they give, that their belief in sharing the arts with the community free of charge. Um, remember that all of this is free of charge to you, and we'll be continuing to do the Diversity Dance Festival, bringing in master classes and cultural dance classes that are available to you, to the community free of charge thanks to the Anderson Madison County Visitors Bureau. So with that, Sure, sure. Um, our dancers will be enjoying deeply rooted dance theater tomorrow. Now this is not an open event necessarily unless you are a pre-professional dancer. So um, all of our classes have been open to anybody, any body can dance, ages 12 and up. However, tomorrow, artistic director Nicole Clark Springer will be here from Deeply Rooted Dance Theater from Chicago. She'll be working with our students and other pre-professional students who have been invited to come onto campus and have a master class and audition with her as well. So we're, we're happy to welcome Deeply Rooted Dance Theater as part of our Diversity Dance Festival as well. I think that's it. That's it, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting Anderson University Dance and Diversity Dance Festival. And please enjoy Dayton Contemporary Dance Company 2.
If I could just talk to you alone and tell We saw beyond our seeming These days of bloody screaming Of children dying bloated Out where the lilies flow Within the tent. 
director of DCC2 and Arts and Literature Programs for the Jacobson Ray Jazz Company and started back way back in 1983 as a performer, uh, then graduated repertoire and has remained as director of DCC2. And so we're gonna open this floor for Q&A. We'll have the dancers introduce themselves, tell you where they're from and uh, whether they've graduated or they're still in school. My name is Hannah, and I am currently a sophomore dance major at Wright State University, and I'm from Dayton, Ohio. My name is Carly. I'm also a sophomore dance major at Wright State University, and I'm from Lebanon, Ohio. Hi, everyone. My name is Mandy. I'm from Dayton, Ohio, and I recently graduated from the University of Cincinnati. Hi, my name is Victoria. I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I graduated from Cooperdale University with a major in dance and theater. My name is Farah, and I'm not from Ohio. I'm from Malaysia, <laughs> which is a country in Southeast Asia. I graduated from Hope College in Holland, Michigan. Um, last May, we began dance and a minor in Texas Dance Studies. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily, and I'm from Lima, Ohio. Currently, I'm a senior at the University of Dayton, um, getting a dual degree in pre-medicine and dance and a minor in medicine. Hi, I'm Chelsea. I'm from Clifton Park, New York, and I recently graduated from Manhattanville College in Purchase, New York, just outside of the Bronx with a major in dance. Hi, my name is Maya. I graduated from Northern Kentucky University with a BFA in dance, and I'm from Fairfield, Ohio. Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm from Salisbury, Maryland, but I graduated from Radford University in Radford, Virginia, and I graduated a year ago with a BFA in dance and a minor in theater. I'm McKellen. I'm from West Valley City, Utah, and I graduated in 2021 with a degree in dance and a minor in philosophy and humanities from Utah Tech University. Now, you're probably wondering why there are no men on the stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, when the Dayton Contemporary Company first came to the existence, our professional company, it was all women before there were men. And then Jordan Blunden, our founder, uh, went out and sought young men who were in athletics and said, come, train with my company. Uh, DC, DC, do as our first company holds auditions. Uh, I've had men in the past, last year I had men, but this year, not came to audition for me. So I am seeking men, put off the word, <laughs> to join our company. So we're gonna open the floor for you to ask questions. Um, just raise your hand and we'll do our best. Anybody, oh, nobody likes to be the first. <laughs> so I'll, I'll start the question off. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Good. So I started you off. <laughs> so, yes. Did colors represent The costumes. Yeah. The Did colors. the colors represent? Um, not necessarily. With any uh, choreographer's choice of what they select is based off their interpretation of their work. Um, so that is, uh, a court. for me, I did a few of the works. Um, mm, some, yes, some, I will change the costume. I was just talking to the, uh, the uh, what's your name back there in the booth? I forget, it was a cool name. Torrin. Torrin. <laughs> that about, I don't know why I chose those at the end piece. That was a bad idea. So I will be changing them again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Which one? Go, okay, I'm my eye went too far. Okay, the first work was uh, by a, a guest choreographer through a grant, the Allegro Foundation grant that we received. She was a former member of DC DC2 and a graduate of Wright State University. Um, and so, McKellen, can you describe what that process was and what Abby had communicated with you regarding the composition? Yeah, so initially we all started by learning the opening phrase that you saw Emily and Farah do, and we built off of that. And the sections that we did where there were the trios, there was the trio, there was the quartet, and there was a solo, those pieces were put together by the dancers. So we initially came up with about 
three sets of eight. And then Abby came in and she etched them in a way that aligned with what she was wanting to portray through her movement. And then towards the end, I think in collaboration with the dancers, you were able to kind of figure out what the crux of the dance would be. And for Abby, it represented trust. And so then we see these lifts coming in towards the end and we see Emily walking towards this big group of people. So it kind of ebbed and flowed throughout with what compositional tools we were using and how they fit into ultimately what the work would become. But essentially it was, it was a little piecemealy, but in doing that we were able to find ways in which previous pieces connected with the overall theme of the piece and how we could integrate this to fit into the theme of the piece. So that's kind of how the first piece came together. And so most of it uh, was mind crafting. And when I first started out in choreography, I really used a lot of movement. Uh, so my vocabulary wasn't limited, but I liked the breadth and, and, and uh, taking from uh, what we call linear movement. But once I worked with Doug Larone, who taught me about humanism, the subtlety, the gestures, I'm like, oh, that's it. And then I worked with Donald Byrd, who had this incredible abandonment in the movement, I'm like, oh, that's it. And then I started going away from, I think, the beauty of the movement to the quirk and the gesture of the movement that I think is interesting. I think it gives it a uh, emotional content or an intention. So, and I used to uh, create all the work from beginning to end, I didn't want to repeat a step, and so one day I asked two of my young artists who were in the company, I said, give mama, and they call me mama, give me limitations. So they said, you could, you, you have to stay on the floor. You, 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 you couldn't run. You couldn't turn, I love the turn. Couldn't turn. So it forced me to kind of come up with a different uh, uh, formula for creating work. And so I, I didn't understand what Carlos would give me, uh, said I need you to give phrases. I'm like, oh, they should be creating the work. And then I began to appreciate that, that that's what we want to do is engage the artist in that. You find the artistic voice and then it brings an element of them and an ownership. So what I do a lot of times there's phrases that I create or I'll say, here's prompt words. I might say, um, peace, hold on a minute. And if I like it, I say, yes. Or I may say somebody, peace, no, wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm looking for something. And so, and then I may take a phrase that I like, and I may say, give me, a, give me four eights, phrase on this, and I go, when I say no, that means exit out, key. And then I may manipulate what they do, and then I may say, quirk it up. Don't give me anything that's very pretty and movement based, arabesque. I need it to quirk and twerk. Uh, and so we craft that on that journey together, and people say, what is it based off of? Like sometimes it's based off on the right artist, the contribution of the material, the music choice, the costume choice, the lighting choice, and sometimes there's this great body of ingredients and you get that incredible red velvet cake that just tastes like mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes? I was curious your company work with the dancers that are still in school right now? Uh, anyone in school want to ask that question? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a lot of um, communication between the two. UD also works with uh, D2 as well. Um, we kind of, there are things where we have,
in the classroom, I substitute teach. So during the plan periods, I'm rehearsing my stuff. I'm choreographing for my other job. So it's like learning how to find that commitment and that time and just making yourself do it even when you know you're all over the place like that. <laughs> and sometimes they don't realize it. Uh, I, told, I told them when you come, the first thing it's gonna feel is uncomfortable at first when you're learning something new. And so embrace that. And a lot of times you don't realize that you've developed a skill set until later on and you go to another environment or to another level and you go, wow, I grew. I can learn faster. I can problem solve. Because it's about challenging you to make that transition to second companies from being a student to pre-professional to professional level. And so if you're willing to do the hard work, the sacrifice, the blood, sweat, and tears, you will get to the other side. And what we're gonna build here is also stamina, endurance, perseverance. You gotta work when, you're, when things are easy. You gotta work when things are a little more complicated. It makes you very diverse artists. And that's what we're trying to instill in these artists. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Yes. So you're so talented, all of you are so talented. Do any of you choreograph or wish to choreograph? Or is that answer uh, I think every single one of us at one point have choreographed or do currently choreograph. I know I choreographed for like 10 years before this, and then I, I moved from Pittsburgh, where I originally choreographed, to Dayton, Ohio, so I could do this have this opportunity and I think a lot of us are in that same boat and then like half of us are in that boat and the other half are currently choreographing so I know my ultimate goal is to be a choreographer I that is where my passion lies so and I think that's that's at least a few of us here where our passions lie yeah I would add on to that I am also pursuing choreography both Maya and I choreograph for local high schools um, in Dayton and Cincinnati for their musical theater as well. So I do that every year and then also pursuing project-based choreography. So presenting, there was um, a festival called Synergy Dance Series, which I presented a work in. Also a couple summer festivals in Dayton that I've done and while I was at school choreographing in the school. So um, yeah, it's definitely interesting to be on the other side, to be both a performer and pursuing choreography at the same time because they're both related but also different and so they both teach you different things and it gives you an appreciation for the person at the front of the room, um, the choreographer as well. So and one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> and also like since a lot of my choreography is in musical theater, I'm also a show choir kid, so I um, <laughs> that's my home. So, and a lot of times in show choir musical theater, if that's all you do, you don't really get to learn a lot about dance technique. So it's really fun to go back to my, my school where I graduated from and, you know, try to help them along in that journey. Cause you know, I went right from show choir. I was like, I am amazing. No one can tell me anything. And then I <laughs> joined a college dance program and I was like, oh my God, that's <laughs> what dance is. So um, it, that's a really fun experience for me to not only, you know, create works, but then take what I learned in concert dance and how does it appear in the more show choir or musical theater formats and what's the same, what's different. And so I just, I love to break that down. It's fun for my brain. So one of the things of, of Jorgen Blunden, the founder's mission for DC's Two, was take these young artists and give them a platform to continue to find their technique as well as gain as much performance experience. But also it wasn't just about developing performers, but it was also about providing opportunity for those to be able to teach, to be able to choreograph and nurture that and provide these opportunities for them to do so. So we've had many of our alumni that have went on to become performers either with our professional company or in other national companies or abroad. We have those who have become teachers, those who have started their own professional dance companies, the one that people may be familiar with Complexions Ballet, Dwight Roden. I danced with him back in the day, and Michael Grooms, who gave the master class in the back, also, <laughs> <laughs> also performed, but there's others, and I'm just saying one of many. Some have gone on to be, to, so second cup is also a way to uh, have that transitional period to decide whether or not 
this is too much. I'm not doing this. Or I understand what this means and what I'm investing in. And so some have went on to become professors of dance. Some, like I said, have started their own companies. So, and some have gone on to the other part of it. They may become the production part of it. But it, it's also about that opportunity that we're, we're allowing in DCDC to, to figure out. Yes. that they used to have with DCDC. I performed with the second company um, for two years. So I've had that sort of experience where we would rehearse on Saturdays together and then I would be a part of a combined work um, and then we would have our concerts combined. So this is sort of my third year, but this is my first year being in the company and experiencing and it's totality. And I kept saying, when you come, come to my company, come to my company, come to my company. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, her mentor, uh, became our artist in residence through DCDC for the University of Dayton and she also started in DCDC too and then she graduated to professional company and then she became the artist in residence of University of Dayton and now she has her own dance company called Onyx Dance Company. We have any other questions? Yes. So how long will this degree Probably one year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the past it depends on the uh, the body of the dance artist, their backgrounds. So in the past, I could have had, it changes every year. Let's say if I have Wright State University, and sometimes I can have five dancers, eight dancers, or two dancers, and then they start at freshman or sophomore year, and they will stay. Uh, it depends on the individual artist. And so I can have those sometimes three or four years. Or I could have most dancers that graduated, the goal is to get a professional job, so some may last two years, most only a year. Um, it just depends on each individual. So this year, I, uh, I don't know, <laughs> but we shall find out. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Going once. <laughs> oh, okay. This is like the auction. <laughs> medicine and or how you think your dance career will help you in a career as a physician or a researcher. Yeah, so when I first came to college, I thought for sure med school, like definitely that route. Um, but then I ran into DCDC and that kind of changed my mind on things. And so I decided that my passion um, and my fulfillment in life truly comes from performing and dancing, connecting with people that way. Um, but that is also what draws me to medicine, is that connection with the patient. Mm -hmm. um, so at first I do want to join a dance company, that is the ultimate goal, dance for a while, and then maybe when my body can't take it as much, um, I think physician assistant school is much more um, feasible for me to do just because it's not like that 10 year long kind of um, program that you need to do in order to become a working physician. Any other questions? Thank you very much for inviting me.